She's running for Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, 3rd District. She says the time for change is now. Take a look. I'm a wife, a mom, and a business owner, which means I'm in and out of this minivan all day. We all have the same things in common. We want to play by rules that make sense, we want to be safe, and we want to be able to afford to live here. It bothers me that politicians are making our lives worse with bad policies. Now, normal people don't run for political office. I have a husband, a business, four kids, and for almost 30 years, I've been an actress and a proud union member. I was never interested in politics, but now politics is interested in everything we do. Roxanne Beckford Hogue joins me live now. Roxanne, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Scott. Glad you can join us. Roxanne, the Board of Supervisors race is nonpartisan, but you've made it clear you're a conservative. However, you weren't always one. When did that change for you? Well, it was a slow movement. I was an immigrant to the United States, and when I became a citizen, I thought you had to be a Democrat. That was the only option for an immigrant. I even volunteered for Bill Clinton's second presidential campaign. And then I put my first child in public school, and things slowly started to occur to me. It's not all about the money. It's not it's not things that go on bumper stickers. It happens to be what your life is like. And then COVID lockdowns happen. That was a great awakening. Mm -hmm. So I'd already by then become a Republican and really involved in being the voice, the lone voice of reason here in uh, in L.A. County. But when the lockdown happened, we got to peer behind the curtain under the hood and discover that for all the chatter and all the angst we have over who's president and who's, you know, red versus blue, it turns out that the people that are closest to us, um, government, you know, governor in, in government, the ones who are on school board, who are on county board of supervisors, city council, those people have real power over our daily lives. And that's how we discovered about the L.A. County Board of Supervisors, five women who kept 10 million people locked at home, who made seniors and students suffer for no good reason, and who still won't let go of power. It's an important position. I want you to talk about that because the primaries are on June 7th. And for those who say, I don't vote in the primaries, that's a big mistake. Explain that. Well, California no longer has primaries because everything's open and it's top two. So really, it's like two general elections. We have one in June and then one in November. And the one in June, by the way, there's already been voting since about May 9th, and it doesn't close until June 7th. And if you don't make a choice now, uh, Kevin Dalton, who's running in the first district, there's only two open seats. Kevin Dalton is running in the first district against an incumbent. And he points out, if you don't make a choice now, you'll get to November and it's like getting to a wedding, having not chosen an entree, he'll be served whatever leftover gunk there is and you won't like it. That's why your voice is important. Now, your campaign, though, really pretty much is grassroots effort. Recently, you've been getting some unfair coverage, uh, even attacked because you're a conservative, which I'm not shocked to hear. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it's very interesting that the people who bleat most about inclusivity and, you know, decry the power of dark money in our elections, when it comes down to an open seat at which everybody who makes it onto the ballot, and there's six names on the ballot, should have an equal opportunity to have their voices heard, that those people actually turn to entrenched politicians and use the, their standards for what counts as a viable candidate pretty much sounds like privilege to me. So they'll say you need to have raised an excessive amount of money or you need to have prior experience in elected office. And this is coming from public radio, from media that uses public airwaves. It's just been very interesting to me. So we finally did get coverage on a local TV station and immediately a Sacramento journalist reached out and smacked the, the reporter who dared to give us airtime for saying, you know, this this parent revolution, it's not what it's cracked up to be. These are operatives behind behind it all, I, I, which yeah. is interesting. I saw that tweet and he said, oh, you need to point out that she's a conservative. Like, oh, oh OK. And then there was an, another like a newspaper that wrote about you. They, they even misspelled your name. 
Well, people misspell my name all the time, and that's okay. That's why I'm Roxanne. But he's a Just journalist. tell people super Roxanne. <laughs> right. He's a journalist. He should actually pay attention to those things. It was another situation where it was they were actually giving uh, interviews to all six candidates, and they were addressing many interesting and important topics to people, though not, I'll point out, school closures, which everyone has studiously ignored. But what was fascinating was that in the interview with the journalist, it was going great until I pointed out that Barbara Ferrer, our public health director, had said, quote, vaccines don't work so great, which she said on video, which mm -hmm. I shared with him. And then he became unhinged and just couldn't speak to me after that. He had no words. And he made his bias very clear in the article, which is sad and very disappointing that a journalist would do that. <sighs> that is disappointing. Um, what are some of the issues you'll address right away? The first thing I'll address is the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We should not be living under a state of emergency. Two of the people who are running are state senators who keep voting to extend that in Sacramento. L.A. County and its 10 million residents, its hundreds of thousands of businesses should be open to and not have any medical discrimination, because as I'd like to point out, discrimination against people based on their medical status is still discrimination. Children should be free to go to school and breathe, and schools should not have to live under the onerous diktats of Barbara Ferrer, who is not an MD, not, uh, she is a PhD, but she, again, quoting her, really didn't like those really tough classes in statistics and math and biology. So she went into public health. And now she's making the decision for millions of people in Los Angeles. That makes sense. You know, Roxanne, um, it's been a tough couple days as a nation. We're grieving what happened in Uvalde. I'm hearing that LAUSD is thinking about bringing back police officers on campuses, which they actually took away during the defund the police movement. I want to get your take on it. This is a horrible, tragic story. I, my heart goes out to all the people who who are affected and then all the all the rest of us who just when we watch tragedies like this it it hurts you at your very core and as a parent even even more it just though goes to show that Bodies like LAUSD when they make decisions without considering unintended consequences and then have to rush back after it turns out that it wasn't a good idea after all um that's not the way to do things. And there are no good or easy answers, but we don't get to them by making declarations based on what public sector unions and campaign contributors tell you what to do. What's the answer? It's sitting down and hearing from all sides and asking critical questions. When a school board member like Nick Milvoin said, oh, we should we should take away school um, armed security. Someone should have been there to say, is that a good idea? Can you think of a situation mm -hmm. where that would not work, perhaps? Just like what happened with, with Barbara Ferrer, the Board of Supervisors should have been there to say, what's the cost benefit of this policy? Blanket policies, just like one, fits, one size fits all clothing, rarely work. I think a lot of people in California are tired of the one party rule. Roxanne, thank you so much for being here and good luck on your campaign. And as always, uh, keep us posted. I will. You can find me at superroxanne.com and I'm happy to talk to anybody anytime. Sounds great. Roxanne, thank you.